It's time to sink our claws into Diamond Select Marvel's Select Sabretooth figure. Wolverine is the best at what he does, but the savage mutant known as Sabretooth clearly enjoys testing that fact, capable of incredibly sadistic acts of brutality and violence. Sabretooth's time in the Weapon Plus program left him with even more aggressive nature and vendetta against Wolverine that would last for decades. The first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall Sabretooth stands, taking the tape measure, putting it right to the top of his head, which I think is right about there. That's a good place as any to stop. According to the tape measure, the figure stands 7.7 .7 inches in height. Centimeters, centimeters, centimeters. You're looking at 19.7 centimeters tall. So have a look at this. He comes with a display stand, very nicely done here, and almost like an aluminum foil coloring of silver. Got some nice little scratches and little dark areas that they've added, like a little brushing of, looks like they probably have taken a dark color, this color being right here, and then they've just brushed the silver over top of it, which giving you a nice varied effect. It doesn't look like it's all consistently the exact same color. Love the grid work that's also featured on the top. There's not really a whole lot to be said for it. It looks like it's probably the interior of the Weapon X program, which surprisingly the packaging touts as being Weapon Plus program. A couple of little pegs happening right here. It should technically go this way, and then you can add all these extra things to it. Your guess is as good as mine as what exactly all these are. It kind of looks like a generator, but those that's going to plug right to the back. There's a slightly, slightly smaller peg and a, li a slightly larger peg, and then that's going to just attach like so. Also comes with these little uh, diodes or these little uh, tubings here. That's going to attach right to the side. It's almost as if we're putting together a puzzle. And this, what almost looks like it could be a futuristic coffee mug, will actually go right here. Other than that, the only other thing that needs to be added is this caution, do not enter a sign. Department, Department X, personnel only. And you can see that not only has it been bent, but it's also been scratched, at least scratched once. Three different claw marks there. It's a slightly softer plastic, but not certainly something you want to be bending a whole lot of. And it doesn't really actually go anywhere. Packaging actually shows it just like kind of right there. At the beginning of the review, I sort of just had it left there. Could have had a little peg or something like that that they could have attached it, even like if they had just attached it there. Instead, it sort of just sits loose. Now, I'm going to put that right there. I'm not forgetting about it. Don't worry. I'm not going to forget about it. One thing I do want to do is bring in the packaging, though. I don't tend to bring back packaging too often back into the review. Don't want to certainly make everything so busy. But, but, there goes Sabretooth knocked over. If you look at the packaging here, they certainly have added a whole lot of extra stuff on the front. None of which, and I can assure you that I've long looked back in the packaging, there is nothing else to be found except for what you're currently seeing right here. The packaging, however, will show some additional wiring, some little control consoles, and some few extra little doodads that unfortunately don't make the final cut. I guess it's something that they decided at the last minute they just didn't want to incorporate into the final uh, production of the diorama. So instead, what we get is this, and we sadly don't get that. Take that all in, my children. Soak it in. <laughs> Okay, now that you got that in your embedded in your cerebellum, let's have a look at the Deadpool or the Deadpool, the Sabretooth figure that unfortunately has fallen. I suppose that is one of the big problems with this particular figure is he's very top heavy. I'm going to get him to hopefully firmly flatly plant his feet and I guess we don't really need the display stand for the time being so we'll just kind of move that out of the way and we'll have a closer look at Sabretooth. Now, I did actually have a look at this figure before, 
feeling as if I didn't do him justice properly, and perhaps also for the fact that I ultimately sold him and regretted it later. You know how it usually goes with collectors. It's always the seller's regrets. Well, needless to say, I was able to find him again because always good for us that Diamond Select always reissues these figures. So if you miss it the first time around, just wait a little longer, the bus is going to come right back again. You're just going to have to wait a little bit for it. So I'm actually glad that I did wait and I didn't go online to get them. Although price point to find this particular Sabretooth, some good news also children, is that the price hasn't skyrocketed on this guy. He doesn't fall within that category of inflated Marvel Select figures that if you missed them the first go around, unfortunately you're gonna pay extra additional pricing for them. Why do I like this figure so much? Let me count the ways. Well, actually it's really only one way, one reasoning why I like him so much. It does remind me of Marvel vs. Capcom. I think the brooding, kind of hunched over nature of this particular saber tooth lends itself well to reminding me, the gentleman who's reviewing this currently right now, of my days playing Marvel vs. Capcom. And oh, I did love those days so much. And even though I didn't technically play a whole lot with Sabretooth, the memory of him being in the character list select uh, certainly was enough that whenever I look at this particular character, I always think immediately, Marvel versus Capcom. For his head sculpt, it's actually pretty good. Maybe lending a little bit more to being a cartoonier version of Sabretooth than perhaps some of the more realistic ones that we get. Uh, Marvel Select can vary from figure to figure. Some figures look a little bit more realistic. Some of them look a little bit more cartoony. I think this Sabretooth can technically tread very lightly on the middle, the line between realistic and the line being something that would have been taken direct, derived from perhaps an animated or a cartoon, or in the case of Marvel versus Capcom. But I do really like the head sculpt. It, what it benefits so much from is not necessarily articulation, which we'll talk about in a second, but it's actually more so the paint. The sculpt and the paint sell this figure in a way that makes up for the fact that he doesn't have a whole lot of posability. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second. A little fiber keeps drawing my attention to it. It's hard for me to push further with a review when I see this little fiber that's stuck to the side of his hand. Okay, we got it. Okay, I think we got it. Let's resume where we left off. So again, I really like the head sculpts. The teeth, and especially the overbite of his fangs sticking out, sells to me what Sabretooth traditionally should look like. Like this, for me, is the iconic look for Sabretooth. Of course, he's got his furred collar around the outer area here, painted very nicely with a second wash. Primarily, it looks like it might have been done cast in a lighter beige, but then they've added some additional brown paint to that. In fact, actually, all of his body gets lended a little bit of paint, whether it's a little bit of a darker red happening here in the shoulders, whether it be a little bit darker orange happening around the abdomen and sides of his torso area here. I like that they've added some little bit of stretching, also to show that he's a very muscular built psychopath, and of course, if he was to dress himself, this would be funny to think that he would be putting this on. Um, you can see that it's it's really stretching itself against his body. You can see some veins sticking out from his bicep. I like always the touches of that. And of course, he's got these little elbow spikes sticking out from his forearm. Very tight really is all the outfit right on his forearms as well as in his in his hands. You can see even right to the fact of how skin tight this is, you can still make out a very, very clear visible outlining of where his thumbnail would be and all his remaining fingernails as well. As we move a little bit further down the figure, this is unfortunately where the figure suffers a little bit. Part of me almost wishes that this guy could have been a little bit taller, a little bit taller. And being that he is also the size that he is, his legs do come across like they are a little stumpy. I get for the fact that they wanted to oversell for the fact that he's got a big, broad torso, a very long torso. The trade-off, unfortunately, kind of means that his lower legs look like they are a little stumpier than what they should be. Something that we would get with a lot of the Marvel Legends figures. Very proportionally sized torso, very stumpy looking legs, however love the additional gold and kind of 
uh, bronze that they've added to the additional paint here. So you've got several different various shades of yellow. The red and the yellow are all trademark of, uh, of Sabretooth. It looks really good on the figure. Very muscular. That is really my takeaway. If I could sign off on a cue card as to ways to describe this figure, the one thing I would talk about is very muscular figure, very comic heavy, very 90s X-Men uh, Sabretooth, and he does look really, really good. The trade-off, unfortunately, and here comes the trade-off, is he's not, he's not superposable at all. Things that you would almost expect the figure to have based on Marvel Legends, Marvel Select standards of today. Uh, unfortunately, this figure doesn't have, like, for example, an ab crunch. Now, unfortunately, the trade-off is debatable as to whether the trade-off was worth it. Of course, without the ab crunch, what you do get is some additional sculpting that may have been sacrificed in order to put the crunch cut in there. Some of the others would have been perfectly fine to give up some of this in favor of an ab torso, like something that you could swivel. Unfortunately, he only swivels in the waist. That's all he can really do. I know, I know, he has more as well. Like his head, for example, will rotate all the way around. Um, it is technically on a ball joint, but you can actually move his head further down than he can up. That's about as far up as it's really going to get. Again, I really like the fact that he's got that front kind of hunched over curl to his uh, his body. His, he's got a really excellent side profile. Uh, his arms hinge out, and that's as far out as they're really going to unfortunately go. Uh, they do, let me just grab one of them. There is his arm, it swivels all the way around. He does have a swivel that also happens in his forearm that swivels all the way around. He has a hinge in the elbow. Not, a too, not too bad of a job with the paint application, even moving the arms as much as I have for this review, and even prior to this review, uh, none of the paint has flaked off, which is something that some of the future, future ones, based on where this guy sits timeline-wise, future select figures will have some problems with paint chipping. But unfortunately for them, not so unfortunate for this guy, he doesn't seem to have that problem. Okay, so his hand rotates all the way around. It hinges back and forth. Like I said, doesn't have anything happening in the ab torso. No crunch, no ball joint, nothing. Let me know down below, though, if that's if you would prefer sculpt in this instance over articulation. As we get to his lower, stumpier-looking legs, they are a little on the stumpy side. His legs move forward and back. The legs split out. In fact, you can split them to about there. Not that you would probably want to do that, but just in case you wanted to know. The lower leg does rotate all the way around. It hinges back and forth. He also has a foot hinge that hinges back and forth. He does have the pegs, which will technically attach to his display stand. Though really the figure, providing you can get him into the proper pose, this is not something where uh, if you wanted to have him, say for example, walking, like if you wanted to have him kind of lunging forward, if you throw off his footing, the figure does have a real tough time standing. If you have him completely flat and completely sort of museum pose, then the figure doesn't have any problems whatsoever. Just go ahead and swivel his arms again, once again, all the way around, that we can get everything corrected. A very neat, neat looking saber tooth. Always been a big fan of this saber tooth. Um, I would personally love, I would be very happy if Diamond Select could release a second version of this guy. What I would change to a second updated version of this guy is proportionally maybe make him about the size of the current Venom, something that Marvel Select has also done, or Diamond Select have also released. Give us about the sizing of a Venom with the same similar posability. Purport, like with his muscles and stuff like that, you could keep it on par with what he's got currently. And maybe at the very least, they could have given him the option to move his mouth in and out, which I know unfortunately would sacrifice. Oh, maybe it wouldn't sacrifice it because if the teeth were on the bottom of the jaw, you could, in theory, uh, bring the, the mouth in and out. Maybe they could incorporate that. Um, it's not too frequent that Diamond Select will double dip a figure, re-releasing a figure, unless he's a popular character like a Spider-Man, or an Iron Man, or a Wolverine. But I certainly hope that would, they would go back and re-release this guy with some updated articulation.
One thing I forgot to mention when we were looking at the figure in the display stand is unfortunately, while the stand should serve the job, it's paid to do one thing, and that's to keep the figure from falling over. Sadly, the pegs that are supposed to sit inside the hold areas of his undersides of his feet just aren't long enough. They're not long enough. They're there for sort of show than they are for anything else. So the one thing that you would hope a display stand should do, and that's keep the figure upright, unfortunately can't even do that. And that's why we're having a look at this figure in a final look for the fifth time, even though you guys are going to see the best of the five. And hopefully this is the last time that we're going to be having a look at him in final looks, at least from re-recording the footage. Um, I do really had buyer or had buyer remorse at the time that I sold this figure. I parted ways with him thinking that I didn't really need to have him in my collection. This is something that a lot of collectors will go through. Uh, sort of the time period in which you look at your collection as a whole, you think it's a little too large, and you feel it's time. It's that time that comes around where you need to trim the collection, and you get rid of some of the stuff that you don't think you really need anymore. Sabretooth, unfortunately, was part of that pile. And once I did sell the Toad, I went for the longest time really not even thinking about this figure until sure enough I found him at my local comic book store again for a reasonable price at about $34.99 and when I saw him I immediately realized how much I love this figure again and I may have said aloud causing many of the people the patrons in the store to give me a weird looking look but I said to myself you know dead Sabretooth who is right next to Deadpool Sabretooth I really regret that I gave you away I Gave you away for what I thought was a pretty decent enough price for the whole lot, but I really wish that I could have had you in my collection again. I didn't play you at all in Marvel vs. Capcom, but still, the design of you, even though you really need an updated re-release from Diamond Select, it's still a really neat looking figure. I'm going to take you home. And I'm sure lots of the patrons were probably looking at me and laughing the whole time. Is that guy talking to a figure? So here we are yet again the second go around of looking at this figure. And yes, truthfully speaking, even though he's got a great design and sculpt to him, I will admit I miss the fact that he doesn't have an ab crunch. He could have also been a little bit bigger, but the size of maybe what we had gotten with the updated, the recently released or recently re-released Venom. If he was about that size with similar sort of posability, um, I think Diamond Select really should entertain the, the idea of giving this guy a second go over. He may not be necessarily the likes of a Spider-Man, an Iron Man, or even his villain or his nemesis, if you will, Wolverine. But I think this figure does deserve a second helping, a second updated helping with some much needed articulation. If you've picked up this figure anywhere along the ways, because Diamond Select is always re-releasing this guy, let me know if you have him in your collection and what you think of the figure. Do you think that he does deserve an updated re-release? Always like reading your comments down below. In the meantime, this was technically a second helping, a double dipping, if you will, of the Marvel Select. This was the Sabretooth Marvel Select figure from the folks over at Diamond Select. Hey now, if you want to go back and have a look at some of my other Diamond Select Marvel Select reviews, there's a whole playlist just for you. And don't worry, we're going to have a look at some other Diamond Select stuff in future videos, but make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. That, my friends, my owls, my patrons, that is the key to making sure that you never miss a beat when it comes to future videos coming onto this channel. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. And I'll see you next time.